fun July day. <laughs> so glad to have everyone here, especially Dale and Janet that have taken uh, quite a trip and been able to see some country and I'm glad they were able to get away, but we're also glad to back. Good to see you all here and I know that this is a time when um, in the farming country you get sometimes a little bit of a break after the plowing is done, but now we don't plow anymore. We do have a, a board meeting coming up. If you look on your bulletin, uh, on the back it is July 27th. It's kind of an important one because we're really going to talk about, uh, among other things, Harvest Fest and make sure we have enough people to man it. It's always good to have it, but everyone has to make sure they're here and not somewhere else to run the show. So make sure that um, you check Kind of check your calendars, make sure you're going to be here for a date, and then we'll have to select a date and come up with the jobs to be done. Also, I noticed that Carolyn has an updated sheet that, uh, for contact information. A lot of people ask me, well, how do I get a hold of so-and-so? How do I get a hold of one of my friends, or how do I get a hold of some member that comes to the church? And we're going to set up um, each year, actually, for, for our uh, church conference, we set up kind of a contact information we want it updated. Anything else? How about birthdays and anniversaries?
So actually, this will be on YouTube if you want to view how you play. You can see the call where you can see. So we rejoice in the Lord. It is so good that He is here. We just have to open our hearts to receive Him. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And He gives us all kinds of strength during difficult times. So let's take time to open up our hearts for Him and lay aside those hindrances to our fellowship, those grudges, our plans, our, uh, maybe our false idols that we hold. Let's just lay them all aside, at least for this hour, and make us a sacred space where we just enjoy and savor one another, but most of all the Lord, and allow His fellowship to be here. And make Him the center of your life. So let's take a moment, get our minds away from the distractions of the world and focus upon the Lord. And then I'll lead us in opening prayer. Lord God, we open our hearts up to you, we praise your holy name, and we ask that you would come and be among us, your people, and walk and talk with us. We know we need to grow in our faith and open our understanding of you and of our world. I pray that you would help us with that, help us to be the people you've called us to be, but most of all, just spend time with us today and fill our hearts. Help us to listen to what you have for us. Thank you for what you're going to do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our psalm is 24. And so this is where our focus needs to be, no matter what goes on in this world. The earth is the Lord and all that is in it, the world and all who live in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it on the rivers. He shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and he shall stand in his holy place. Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Who do not lift their souls, up their souls to what is false. And do not swear deceitfully. They will receive a blessing from the Lord. And vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek Him. Those who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. And be lifted up, O ancient doors that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory. I must let him come in today. Our next song is reminding us of how much God has given us in our country. Um, 697 in your hymn book. Verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs>
Um, good to have Jenna back. She's going to read for us out of Amos. So we may have to look hard to find that in, uh, in the Bible. It's one of those minor prophets, even though what he has to say is in Bible.
God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit that he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Thank you so much, Janet, for your reading. I'm so grateful we've got several people that have agreed to, to read because this is the most important message from God is from His Word. And uh, we get to be the carriers of that Word. Now it's time for our joys and concerns. Um, what's on your heart? Let's pray for Paulette, and she's suffering with cancer, and 
needing God's healing touch, a miracle. It would take a miracle to bring her out of what she's going through right now. And we just pray for God to be with her. And to speak to her. So we'll call it, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. I think we ought to be praising uh, Amy and the girl and Gail too. I think this is real nice and what she has this music here. If you've ever noticed in this book, there's just one, uh, she has to improvise at the bottom and you know, it's on her left hand. And I think this is just really, really nice. And I think what you do is know it's nice to be Well, thank you. It is nice to be part of a little brown church, even though the, the brown is on the inside of this church. But we are one of those churches, and we are able to be a part, as of, are you, a, a contributing part of what makes God's kingdom. And so, thank you for that observation. Let's give thanks that we get to be a part of this ministry, and that God has gifted us uh, all for what we've been called to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And let's give thanks to Dale and Janet and those who have been traveling. A lot of us travel, and sometimes they take it for granted that it's going to be okay on the highway, but if you really thought about it, people coming at you at 70, 80, 90, and I guess there's a lot of people driving 100, and maybe texting while they're doing that. Um, think about how many things could go wrong. And we don't know how many times God has spared us, but let's give thanks for uh, everyone who's traveled in here, that they've been safe, and pray for those who are on the highway. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Anything else? We have a mighty God and we should be going to Him with prayer. A lot of times we would rather worry than pray. Let's take time to cleanse our hearts from all unrighteousness. Make sure that you um, spend time with God and in, in fellowship with Him. Make sure that your heart is in, is in the right place. And give you a moment, if you haven't done that this week, to do this now. And then also to talk about what's in your heart with God who changes things. So our prayer song is found in 2016 in your faith and sing her into my heart. Father, we thank you for your presence here among us. We thank you for good times that you give us, but also we thank you for the trials that you have used to strengthen us. I pray for that you would bring healing to those in this congregation that are going through trials right now. I pray for those who are going through spiritual struggles right now, that you would heal them and comfort them and Give them the strength that they need. And for those in our community, we pray for healing. Even if they don't attend church or haven't even talked to you, I pray that your goodness would shine down upon them. That they might respond and find out that you are a loving God who absolutely loves them and loves us. 
Thank you, God, for those who are willing to take up leadership during these difficult times. We know if there's no leader in communities, things go bad. Thank you for those who are willing to do what is right. Thank you for those who are willing to, to take up their role in leadership in our local county government, and our city government, and those in our state and federal government. We pray that you would guide them. For those that have gone astray, we pray that you would bring them back. We pray that they would lead our country in a way that honors you and seek your guidance and seek your word. We know that that's not the way of the world, and so we ask that you would bring this about in a supernatural way that we might know that we are following your word. We pray for our military. We thank you for those who protect our nation and protect our borders. We pray that you would bless those at the, at the borders and those who are maybe in far off lands that are working to keep us safe. We don't know how many times they've had to act in ways we haven't heard about. We pray that you would bless them and their families, keep them safe and healthy and protect them. Pray for those who protect us locally. We pray that you would bless them and provide for their families and provide for their needs, for the law enforcement, for firefighters, EMTs, and for those who work in our utilities. For our farmers and ranchers who raise food for us, thank you for their work. Pray that you would bless them even during difficult times with drought and bad prices. Thank you for those who truck goods our goods to market and bring back things we need and that you keep them safe on the highway. Thank you. It's just so many truckers bringing us things we need and sometimes we take it for granted and that you keep them safe. Thank you to those who are working in our schools for teachers and, and principals and those who maintain the building and cook the meals. Thank you for each one. We pray that you would bless them for their work. Even some over the summer are working on other things, but we know that teachers and staff have to work all year on getting ready for uh, the kids and pray for our students. We pray that you would bless our students, help them to stay safe over the summer, help them to keep learning. Most of all, help them to learn about you and to keep growing in their faith. We pray for those who are serving as missionaries, especially in difficult, hard lands where the gospel doesn't go flow freely, where it's stifled, there's persecution. We pray that you would bless them and keep them safe and healthy and provide for all of their needs. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's hard for us to imagine what that's like because our nation has been such a free nation. But we know there are Christians who are persecuted for their faith in other lands. We pray that you would bless them and protect them, provide for their needs, and during their times of trial and persecution that you would give them strength and endurance and, and perseverance and help them to even reach those who are persecuting them. Thank you for our hospitals and care homes. We pray for the staff there that you would bless them and provide for their needs and for their staff needs. Keep them healthy. We pray for the patients that are there that you would bring healing and bring comfort and hope and that your presence would be known there. Thank you for Those who are doing uh, jail and prison ministry, we pray that you would help them to reach those who are incarcerated and help those who are incarcerated to find you and be reconciled with you and their families and their communities. And now we would pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time we'll receive your offering in the blue basket back there. And he got to be in God's presence, and as we read about 
what our heritage was in Ephesians, he got to see all that. But it's still hard to hear when bad things happen to good people that don't seem to deserve it. If you're going through a hard time right now, maybe good times aren't coming very well, aren't just pouring out. Maybe you've got some problems that come up that just won't go away. And it seems like as we read the Old Testament and the New Testament, that's more the norm than the really good times that really moves nicely. When people pay off their debts that they owe you, neighbors treat you right. It seems like we live in a world that we can't get along. Isn't that so? Occasionally we hear about good neighborhoods and where good people do good things for one another and protect one another, maybe back in another time. Well, that, that's following, basically, if we follow what God's laws have told us, things will go smoother, even though there will be tragedies. But that's not the case of what we saw here. This was John the Baptist preaching the truth and people not liking it and putting him in prison. And even Herod kind of liked what he, said, what he was saying, but he also was disturbed by what he was saying because he was speaking the truth. Remember that prophet Amos who was preaching the truth to the king and they didn't really didn't like it. They said, go away to the people who want to hear this. We don't want to hear this, this truth, so-called. He was in Israel where they were soon to be judged. And there was God's law that was symbolized by that plumb line. I was thinking of Tom with the plumb line. He really uses one to make sure that the walls are sturdy, won't come falling down. I always wonder when I see these huge buildings made of brick or made of stone, how do you go up that high without it tilting just a little bit one way or the other and falling down? You have to follow that plumb line. And just like a nation that doesn't follow God's laws will tumble some point, so individuals will tumble if they don't follow God's laws. It's just the way we are. We don't stick, keep that balance. But the, God seems to judge nations more than uh, more consistently than individuals because even as you read in Ecclesiastes, some people seem to get away with doing evil and live long lives. You read about group dictators who live to be pretty old. Wow, live to be pretty old. Stalin did terrible things. So God doesn't pay all of those accounts as it were in October. But as nations, it seems like because of the mass of people going the wrong way, it sways, as it were, the wall, and if it's not staying true, it falls down and tumbles. And that's what was going to happen to the northern kingdom, and Amos was giving them a chance to repent, and if you read the Old Testament over and over again, God gave them prophets to warn them so that it wouldn't happen. He does not want the judgment to come down. In the mystery of God's workings in the world, there is judgment that comes and, and we don't completely understand why and when it comes, but it does. And Amos was trying to do them a favor and spare them from this terrible judgment that was about to happen. And what did the people say? Get out of here. We don't want to hear this. We don't want to hear the truth off. Because we would rather Imagine that somewhat, somehow if we would just all get along, why can't we all just get along and be happy? And, that, and they imagine this would happen somehow if we 
didn't have these prophets coming in and saying these things. But people aren't, aren't happy. People don't get along. Just as human nature, I guess. So the cure for it is not that we just have more enlightenment. Remember the enlightenment came out and, and there were some really good things that came with the enlightenment. It opened our, our eyes to what we could do. And the problem is one of the dangers is that if you carry it too far, I think humans can become perfect on their own. Our Constitution was written with a lot of enlightenment ideas, and our, certainly our Declaration of Independence. But if you carry that too far, you think we don't need God. And that's where Israel was, that's where Herod was, and that's where our world will naturally fall if we don't fight against the current. So we have this terrible tragedy. Here's John the Baptist, gone, the prophet, who was doing so much good for so many people, being the firm line of the law to show them where they had erred so they would come back to God. And there's a lot of curious people, but it seemed like a whole, not a whole lot of people were of the majority in and Judah, while they liked him and thought he had a good message, were not following what he had to say in Israel there, where he was preaching. It's amazing the Romans put up with him. And then Herod, because he made a promise off the top of his head, carried through, rather than saying, I was wrong, guys, and I'm going to have to take the consequences for this, he said, well, I said it, so now i got to do it. And he had John executed because of a, just a whim. So a powerful man of God, uh, the last of the great Old Testament prophets, killed on a whim because of a world doing it dance. You see tragedies like that today, don't you? It'd be nice if I just gave this glossy message about how everything's getting better, we're living in a world, we're all holding hands, and, and gathering around, loving one another. I would love to be able to preach that message. Man, I wish we would get our act together so I could preach that message. But I see a world of conflict, of hate, of manipulation, of even people in small communities, instead of drawing together to say, we can do this together, fighting among one another over trivia, over egos, people doing mean things, stealing from one another. We live in a world where bad things happen. But the, the deal is, what do we do about it? Do we just despair and say, well, it's a terrible world, terrible people are terrible? Or do we hide from it and say, well, that's that community, our community is so much better? Or do we take what God wants us to do with it? Because I really didn't get a good explanation of why John the Baptist was taken away out of the Bible. I mean, I think I know. I think it said people were following John the Baptist, and actually to this day there's people who don't, aren't Christians who follow John the Baptist. Maybe that was the reason, because too many people were not focused on Jesus. But people left following Jesus after... You know, and... and Certainly John, some of John's disciples were discouraged and, and drifted away after the death of John the Baptist. But it needed to be done in God's wisdom. And Jesus mourned and went on. And Jesus could have raised it from the dead, couldn't he? He could have, he could have stopped it, but he didn't. And God does intervene sometimes in this world, this mean world. cruel world, it does intervene with miracles, but for the most part, he, humans want to live life without God, and so he, he God has shown you what you can do. And we find that humans fall so short. But what he's done is given us the strength not to go and commiserate, not to say, 
say, oh, what happened to John the Baptist could happen to us. Not be afraid. I thought about seeing if Gail had a teddy bear to say the comfort animal, but really God gives us that comfort and he's present, but really what he wants us to get out of it is to, uh, this is the best I can do with a mountain climbing rope. He wants us to keep climbing higher. He wants us also to use this, I have one of these in my pickup, I can use this rope to pull, pull myself out sometimes. I've used it to pull branches. I've used it, um, I think I've even, even used it to get a hold of something to pull myself out. But God wants us to climb higher, to be stronger, because of what we read in Ephesians that our inheritance is eternal. And we are made in His image, but yet constantly the trials that we go through, we talk about the trials in the Old Testament, they talk about the trials, but in the New Testament, certainly, especially in the letters, what we call epistles, the trials that they're going through, because Christians did not have it easy after Jesus rose from the dead, you think, wow, the worst part's over. He's risen from the dead, arose in the ascension up to heaven. You know, it's all good now. It wasn't. There was terrible persecution for the church. And they needed to be strong, and they needed to use their gifts to help one another out, to rescue one another. They used this rope as a word of rescue. But the church built up during those times of persecution that strengthened and it became a force that took over the Roman Empire during that time. Sure, the people started to fall away as things got easy, but God used the terrible things that happened and turned it into something good. You may be going through a terrible time right now. You may be going through the time of your family has gone astray. Things that you hoped for that wouldn't happen did. God has given us a way, a cord, a strength to be able to endure and persevere and be strengthened. And also to pull up others and to climb higher even during rough times. I don't know what drives mountain climbers. I mean, I like a little bit of thrill, but I don't like dangling and looking down and seeing nothing down the bone. Held by a little cord with little stakes that are held in the rocks. I don't trust myself to pound a stake hard enough to hold me over a dangling rock. Some of those guys have to dangle and go up underneath that the rock. And then some of the people camp out. Have you seen that? They camp out on the sides of rocks. Or the cliffs. They put out a little sleeping bag and they nail it in or whatever they use, the stakes, whatever they're called. And some of them are dangling over thousands of feet. Unless they're doing some trick photography, it looks pretty dangerous. But yet there's something about the thrill of ascension and the thrill of getting above the problems that maybe they express in this way. Because certainly it gives them some kind of rush. But we will find that as we are conquerors in Christ, that as we are able to climb that mountain, as we are able to help that neighbor, as we are able to bind together each other in accord, that we get a certain joy, a certain sense of accomplishment, a certain exhilaration as we're allowed as we conquer. Right now we're not able to do jail ministry, but you can tell that when we were willing to go in and take a little risk on people who couldn't do us harm when they were released or harmed in there. When you saw someone who had not believed in Christ turn their life around and believe there was an exhilaration. Wow, this is a miracle that happened.
because, because the gospel went out. And I've got to be the instrument of that. If you're not experiencing the exhilaration and the joy of the Lord, are you taking that risk? Are you willing, after the tragedy, that, to gather yourself up? Or even during the rough times, are you willing to make that stand? Are you willing to, to take that risk so that you can experience that exhilaration? safe, stay at home, not, not experience that. God loves you no matter what. God loves you whether you're hesitant or bold, crazy, insane, He absolutely loves you. But He wants to give you the satisfaction and to look forward to the eternal joys, not to what looks to be the best right now. So let's let God give, equip us, and let's follow that equipment that he's given us, and let's be the people God has called us to be, to take a little risk in the kingdom of God. Amen. Our hymn is found in your favorite scene book, 2,226, Find Us Together. And if you want to play along with your instruments, this would be a nice one too. And you know, I think you missed out on the first one because your instruments are there. So no, I did play. Oh, you did play. You did. Okay. Let All me right. play the video and you can watch. <laughs> <laughs>